Uh, so in case everyone's aware, we have a phenomenal open source ecosystem within uh, the Odyssey community uh, that uh, Adam and I are helping uh, catalyze it. Uh, if you, just for just for perspective, uh, the Odyssey community has contributed over 20 million lines of code over the past 10 years. Uh, over 600 contributors have been involved over and we've created over 200 repositories and that has come from over 30 organizations. So this is really something to be celebrated. We've created such incredible tools for doing data science as, as, as a service with Atlas and with Hades for doing re reproducible network studies. So our goal is to try to make sure that we are building this. We're in, in, encouraging new contributors to always join Odyssey, as well as making sure that we've got good governance over our tools so that they can work well for everyone and we can get full value out of network studies and they can be run by everyone in our community. Uh, next slide. So our first goal was to really improve the process to engage and train contributors to become more active in Odyssey. And so one of the things that Adam and I did is we uh, brought in Katie Sadowski, Clark uh, Evans, Nate Buskins, Dan Smith, and Anthony Senna. We really in, in, enlarged our leadership team. We developed, uh, we, tailor, we tailored our Chiron training program this year, and we got 20 fantastic new contributors, and we're doing a lot more direct mentorship. And this was all kicked off at our 2023 Odyssey Developers Conference. Uh, and so this, so one of it is gonna be just building a better personal connection for career development for software developers in the Odyssey community. We really encourage you to join the Open Source Working Group. Uh, is a great way to sharpen your skills as a software developer or learn new ones. Uh, next slide. On uh, The other big thing that we did is back in April, we launched the Formal Technology Advisory Board. And this is focusing on all of our software, not just, we'll, you know, we often focus on repo by repo, but this looks at the whole system. How can we make sure it's better sta stable, stable, secure, supportable, and sustainable for us to develop? So we want all of our members to get full value out of the software of Odyssey. And so this is really where we're having these great discussions that have been kicked off on how we create new standards. How can we make sure we support as many databases uh, as feasible for our community since, we're, since we are uh, self-prescribed as technology agnostic? And how can we better coordinate? And I think the big things that we've really been able to accomplish is really uh, is partnering with, with Hades and following the lead of trying to create a biannual release schedule for all of our software. So we all know we all can run on the same software and that we can run we know which network studies run on which versions of our software. Uh, oh, so this, so, uh, and we've also launched two new uh, user groups for Perseus and for Databricks. And so it's been really exciting launching more groups to help support uh, different database platforms and technology within Odyssey. Uh, next slide. Okay, so uh, please join the journey. We're going to have a fantastic hackathon at the Global Symposium. It's going to be Saturday morning from 8 a.m. to 12 and Sunday from 1 to 5. This is a great way to, to, to cozy up and meet other great developers, to learn how to work with Hades, and uh, and really understand and get a chance to sharpen your R skills. So please join us at the Odyssey Symposium. All right, Greg, thank you. All right, turning my hat around. Okay, a different working group now. Uh, this is our medical imaging working group. Uh, this is from pixels to phenotypes. How can we enable observational research with medical imaging data? This is a work group that I lead with uh, with Chan, and it's been wonderful. He's, uh, as you know, he's at Yonsei University in South Korea. So we have calls at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. alternating every two weeks, and this allows us to span the globe. So we get our European partners when we do it 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we get our West Coast partners uh, and our uh, Asia Pacific during the 7 p.m. time. So it's been very, very productive in doing that. Our goal is really building an extension to bring imaging research into Odyssey and also to be able to enable all the great deep learning and segmentation algorithms that are being generated. You may not know this, but over 10,000 papers were published last year about deep learning algorithms on segmenting every organ from every imaging modality and creating powerful phenotypes for tracking disease. And then of course, we wanna start doing this and create reference implementations for this infrastructure. All right, next slide. So the, our first goal uh, is go, was to create uh, the CDM model and get uh, to create our first 
model for how to do this. And I'm really proud to announce that we've created, uh, we've published a paper and it has, is in press right now. We submitted it in August, but we've really worked hard to be able to create a, a, a foundational model for bringing imaging and imaging features derived from segmentation into the OMOP model. We made this deeply aligned with the NLP process. Uh, we feel like it really is similar to a different modality of data. And so the good news is that we created this model. And so we've been working with the CDM group and Claire really closely, but we did not make our get deadline of getting it into the CDM by Q3 because we both kind of agreed that we probably should have reference implementations before we add things to our foundational model. Better to, to, to test things out now before we move it forward. So we were overly ambitious with our OKR, and we decided that our first goal is to really get the vocabularies for DICOM and RADLEX into the OMOP vocabulary and to build out some reference implementations and start doing that. And so I encourage you to join our medical imaging working group. We have the paper. Hopefully it'll be published very soon, but you can get it uh, in our working group if you'd like to see the draft of it as we submitted it. But it is exciting. Next slide. Basically, it adds two new tables. And the two new tables are, one is for imaging occurrences, which indexes all of your DICOM data. So you can now search for acquisition parameters like slice thickness and T1 and T2 and different protocoling within MR. As well as on the right-hand side, it has a process now for us bringing in uh, bringing in imaging features like volumes of organs, which would be really useful, and their morphology like nodules into the OMOP model. So the, the benefit is it maintains provenance while you can still use all the existing tools you have and love like Atlas for doing all your phenotyping and cohort definitions. And so that's really the intention of enabling the existing tools, but while enabling provenance so you know where, which measurement came from, which algorithm came from which images is really our quest for this. Okay, so now we're super excited. And of course, the, the, the famous quote is, the difference between theory and practice is that in theory, there is no difference and in practice there is. And so we are moving forward with trying to implement this. We have a, a group of highly interested academic medical centers who are interested in trying to implement this. We were able to get some seed uh, gift funding from Gates Ventures. Thank you very much to help us focus on Alzheimer's research. There's a wonderful open source algorithm for brain segmentation using UNET uh, for, for uh, characterizes about 133 labels within the brain. And so we're uh, hoping to actually begin doing this by building reference implementations uh, by early next year. So we haven't made our OKR deadlines, but we learned a lot in the process and we are still marching forward. And we hope that you can join us on Saturday, also at 8 a.m. to 12 a.m., where we're actually gonna be giving a presentation about the new imaging model and how to help you build out your reference implementation, how to harvest your DICOM data elements to bring it into the OMOP model. Uh, and so please join us at the Global Symposium where we're going to be, you'll see several posters on this model as well as several, several imaging groups. And we hope to have you join our working group. Thank you, Craig. Great. Thank you so much, Paul. Uh, next up is our vaccine vocabulary working group. Uh, Oliver. Oliver, you're on mute. Okay, you okay now? Yes. So yeah, uh, so here I want to represent our magazine vocabulary working group uh, present our update. So basically our working group uh, is uh, focused on targeting uh, a, a major issue in, in current OMA of certain about, which is about the vaccine vocabulary. Currently we have over, uh, over 20, uh, all kinds of vaccine vocabularies like the CVX from CDC or ISNORM or ISNORM extension. ISNORM is the USA version. ISNORM extension is for the uh, outside the USA. And then there are many, many more like a C CPT4 and uh, HC PCS. So how to integrate that? Actually, it's a difficult one. And the last year, our working group uh, published a paper. We found a lot of issues, but we didn't give a solution. So for this year, uh, we say, okay, maybe we can use one standard ontology. Uh, here we say uh, vaccine ontology to harmonize all the different vocabularies uh, for the OMOP studies. So the vaccine ontology is an OPO foundry uh, ontology now and uh, has been approved there. And uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm actually the, the, the leading uh, developer uh, for the ontology and uh, which has also been 
uh, funded by a U24 grant. So uh, for this uh, study, we have three uh, OKRs. So the uh, first objective is to build a consensus model, and we, in the, so currently it's still you know, on some like planning, like a sort of experiment. The sort of one actually is, is basically done, but however, to implement uh, the, the idea, actually we still has, have a lot to do. And then, then it comes to the objective too. So to, to really test our systems, we first uh, use CVX. It has over 200 uh, vaccine turns uh, from the CDC. And we have manually um, added uh, and uh, mapped into vaccine ontology. And some of them actually have been there before. And then we also develop an automatic uh, computational system to kind of test them. So again, it's, uh, this part has been supported by our uh, working group, especially from the Chung chief group uh, from UT Health. And, and our study also has been uh, supported by a lot of people. Uh, we have about 10 people in our active working group. Uh, uh, in addition to our Michigan group, we also have Asia uh, and also from an Odyssey and uh, Equivia. So I think we are very active in the, in the studies. And then, um, so the automatic working uh, mapping algorithm also works very well. And now we are testing with the bigger uh, IS norm system now. And then we are also trying to incorporate uh, the ultimate goal is to incorporate the video mapping system into OMOP and make OMOP really useful in terms of vaccine term uh, modification, uh, vaccine term mapping and, and analysis. Uh, okay, next one. Yeah, I only have two slides. So this slide just to show you, uh, we will present our work uh, in the uh, symposium and we welcome everyone to join our presentation. Yeah, so basically uh, we will you know, represent our, our our method and uh, the manual was as uh, the model and it's uh, automatic uh, uh, mapping uh, certain so we are come to present to to our certain to our poster and uh, and discuss with us we also look for collaborations as well thank you thank you oliver uh next up we have anna for our uh, standardized vocabularies work group um so all of you guys know that vocabularies are the backbone of OMOP CDM. And naturally, we have a lot of different pieces related to vocabularies in the community. We have separate working groups like vaccine working group. We have vocabulary working group. We have vocabulary team and different sorts of developments are work are happening around the community. So vocabulary working group has a specific place in this whole infrastructure and system. Uh, the purpose of this working group really, or at least what we are trying to do now, is to um, be the place where people can ask questions about all sorts of things, about development, about usage. That's the place to educate the community about the recent developments. That's, of course, the place to also connect people so that if different working groups have uh, different needs as it relates to vocabularies, vocabulary working group can be a place to discuss that. And if we look at the next slide with the OKRs, naturally the OKRs for this year are coming from this uh, big, uh, big picture. One of the, as I said, um, OKRs was to educate the community more about what's going on uh, with the vocabularies um, and the vocabulary team. And we've had multiple sessions on different aspects of vocabularies uh, on what's going on. You can see what we already covered and what we're planning to cover on the slide. And I just want to remind you that all of the materials are accessible through Teams. You have the slides, you have the recordings. So if something catches your eye, if something is uh, relevant to the work that you do, you can always go back to the Teams and uh, see the recordings and the slides. And also, if you want to present something as it relates to your vocabulary work, you're always more than welcome to come and um, share your experience, knowledge, wisdom, and work. Another big piece that is coming back to the vocabulary improvement process that we've been focusing on this year is to provide guidance on how to contribute your content to the vocabularies. Just to remind you, this year we said that we want to 
put extra effort into more robust and transparent pipelines for contributing your content. And we uh, published and advertised the instructions for community contribution through all sorts of various channels. I want to specifically highlight APEC um, community and APEC community call, uh, where we also spent quite some time on discussing uh, community contributions, but also as well the vocabulary working group and the forums and so on and so forth. And you can see what we achieved so far on the screen. And right now we are, as the community, collaborating on establishing a more robust pipelines. And we have a couple of members who are coming to our calls and sharing their knowledge and their expertise on how to build a better infrastructure for that. So if you have any expertise with building such pipelines, you're again more than welcome to come. And then the final element of the OKR specifically for the vocabulary working group is to think more about metadata and how we store that, because we see that uh, the community needs more metadata about the content of vocabularies. And something that we already achieved is extensive discussions with our collaborators on how to store this metadata and which um, standards to use. And we're constantly working on that, um, including the orange uh, items on the list in number three. And if you have anything uh, to contribute to metadata, if you have any questions regarding uh, vocabularies, if you have the content you want to contribute, please come to the meeting at the Odyssey Symposium so that we can um, continue on building a more collaborative resource. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Anna. Uh, next up, we have Martin Shumi, who will be doing uh, both Hades and the Methods Research Workgroup. Um, yeah, so uh, Hades uh, is our uh, suite of R packages for most of our analytics in Odyssey. Uh, at the start of the year, we set uh, four uh, objectives. Uh, the first one is to have regular Hades-wide releases. So as I just mentioned, Hades is a set of R packages, which each R package has its own release cycle. But we also felt that it was necessary to actually have a Hades-wide release where we bundle all the current versions of packages together into a single coherent whole. Um, and so we've done that at the end of uh, Q1, and I'm actually in the process of creating the second Hades wide release uh, right now. And that actually seems to be uh, something that's very beneficial for the community. The second thing we set out to do is to have more user involvement. Um, I must admit that we haven't made much progress on that front, so that might actually come back in next year. Uh, we also um, decided that we should have more roadmaps, design specifications. Again, didn't make too much progress on that in this year, so that might move on to 2024. Um, and we also set out to have improved stability uh, of Hades, and I do think that we also made some progress there. We now have at least testing servers for all the database platforms that we support, so some of you might know that we support a crazy range of database platforms. Um, so we have testing platforms, uh, uh, databases for those now, um, for the ones that we don't have, and we actually declared them to be uh, deprecated. Um, so that, but, but that puts us in a good position that we can now actually test the software on all uh, platforms that we're actually using. Um, I do also want to call out the thing that this wasn't on our list, uh, which is strategists. So we have been working on strategists throughout the year. And I actually want to do a special shout out to Anthony Senna, who's been um, pushing or, or pulling all of this, the most of the work on strategies. So strategies is a new way of actually um, making use of the uh, Hades packages uh, without actually having to program R. So the idea is that you can create a study specification that pulls together all different uh, Hades packages. You uh, call strategies, it will then run that study for you and it will produce the outputs. And at no point uh, do you actually have to touch uh, our code. And so I think that's a very promising uh, development uh, that hopefully soon will be in a very stable situation. All right, next slide. Uh, so the second work group I want to talk to, about, to you about is the methods research work group. Um, we changed our course a little bit this year. Uh, having more of a goal to just create awareness of who is doing 
what type of methods research in Odyssey. And I think actually we've been very successful in that. So lots of people have talked about the research that they're doing. So it's a sounding board for methods research in progress. So it's not just for presenting on the paper that you just published that now is finished, but also about the the, the, the research that you're starting on or, or working on. Um, we also aim to identify new methods research question and to find collaborators for your methods research. Uh, next slide. Just to call out some of the um, methods research that's been going on this year. Uh, so Mark's group um, has been working on large scale survival models um, using uh, GPUs to speed those up uh, to a point that they're actually feasible. Um, also, uh, Fawn especially has been working on Bayesian models to adjust for multiple looks and systematic error through negative controls and is actually expanding that uh, idea to also work across databases. Uh, Yang Chen's group at UPenn has been working on uh, different ways to do likelihood approximations with um, allows us to actually do analysis across the Odyssey network without having to do crazy uh, numbers of iterations. Uh, but actually, Yang has been focusing very much on doing these one-shot evidence synthesis. You can do analysis across the network, but you only need one round of communication, which I think is crucial because like, we can't actually have ports open on many of our databases. Um, we've been looking at how well uh, our confounding adjustment methods work when sample size is small. I'll actually be presenting a poster at the Odyssey Symposium on that. Um, and uh, Lin Ying and George have been uh, leading work on a better balance metric, which the aforementioned research shows is actually very much necessary. So anyway, so that's some of the, the topics. So uh, we have meetings every month. Uh, please join. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Martine. Uh, next up is our medical device working group. Now, Asia sent me her slides and then uh, I guess was called into a meeting. So I don't know um, if... Uh, Andrew, or any? Oh. I am here. Oh, perfect. Well, then, there you go. Yep. So, yeah, so we have um, last year, we have actually three objectives. The first one is expand the leadership team and establishing collaborations across Odyssey and beyond. So, we, from there, we had uh, three subgroups and then we were establishing the leadership. Then, then the other objectives is more related with subgroups, uh, but we are still in the process of establishing that. So today I'm going to focus on the objective one that is more overall for the whole medical device working group. So first of all, um, we did increase our meeting frequency. We now meet every three weeks on Thursdays either 9 a.m. or 12 p.m. Eastern time. And then we have uh, Michael Matheny, who joined our leadership team. That is great. And then, so this year we really focusing on the um, uh, two activities, actually it's one. So in the first quarter, there is an FDA medical device active surveillance RFI that is seeking for information from the industries and public. So we organized the, the world, responded, sent out and one response to this RFI and consequently we were invited by the FDA to present it to the FDA about uh, our response where we presented um, the idea of OMOP and how the working group had done some work on adding correcting the UDI information into the common data model and how the OMOP model of federated um, study. So then after that, uh, there is a NEST CC and FDA medical device active surveillance RFI, RFP out, and then the, the group members actually separately responded to this RFP. So I was leading the EXO informatics team and Michael Matheny led the VA and the Vanderbilt team to respond to this RFP, and we are still waiting for hearing the result. It, just, it should be, hopefully it can be released by this week. Um, and both of us are 
saying that we're going to collaborate with Odyssey. So next. Um, we also have one, um, we want to do something with the Odyssey Symposium. So this time is the first time that we are proposing for our working group to have an activity. The, it will be the Sunday, October 22nd uh, afternoon, 1 to 5 p.m. It will be Campbell Room. And the two topics that is proposed as one that we we have been talking about that we want to have a more detailed device table to capture more device features for the CDN. So probably we wish we can do that at the um, symposium as a proper type. So um, the we we could look at the fire resources as a starting point. And then the second will be talking to the members or whoever come to the symposium to, to think about the 2024 activities. Thank you. Oh, oh, right. We're still looking for leaders still. As I said in the beginning that our subgroups are not yet uh, settled. So uh, yeah, so open, for, open to for anybody who are interested to join us and uh, to lead the group to um, work on medical device and the uh, amount. Thank you. Thank you, Asya. Next up will be Melanie Filofsky. She will do a healthcare system interest group and then Themis. All right, so the healthcare system interest group, um, we have a meeting at the symposium and it's not too late to sign up. It's gonna be on Sunday from one to 5 p.m. Uh, not to brag, but I have two amazing speakers, Paul Nagy and Kristen Koska, who will also be joining this meeting. It's kind of an interactive lecture style um, to get folks um, involved with the healthcare systems interest group and answer some of those more tricky questions about us. Uh, it's perfect for those thinking about joining the journey, those who have already started their journey, or those who want more for their journey, because as we all know, Odyssey and the OMOP CDM is a continuous journey. All are welcome, so please come. Um, one other thing I'd like to announce that's just kind of been posted on it, at the Health SIG, yeah, um, is that the Healthcare Systems Interest Group is collaborating with the um, vocabulary work group for community contributions. So if you have EHR data, you may have a lot of free text source values in there that you have to map to standard concept IDs. So we're collaborating with Anna Astropolis and the vocabulary work group on the community contributions. And we are gonna be presenting with the vocabulary work group on October 17th. And we're gonna be starting to set up this process of how um, local healthcare systems can contribute all those mappings that they have um, done where they've mapped their source values to standard concept IDs and set up a process. So that way we can reuse those mappings. Others in the community can reuse those mappings. So please join us October 17th in the vocabulary work group. Now on to Themis. Um, Themis work group update. Our OKRs have been met for the year. I'm very excited about that. Um, so we, our first one was to establish or reestablish actually the Themis Working Group. So you can find us on the first and third Thursdays of the month, 9.30 a.m. Eastern time on MS Teams. Our second OKR, we wanted to publish some guidelines for the creation, nomination and adjudication process for Themis convention approvals. Um, so check out the Themis GitHub. Uh, when you go to the landing page there, we have a process diagram that has all the steps. And then below that, we also have, you know, um, the conceptual logic um, written out on each of these steps and some more details about how to work through your Themis issue or if you have a Themis issue. We also had our third OKR was to complete some, or our third objective was to complete some Themis work. And we're happy to announce that we have ratified um, two Themis issues, the first being guidance for drug exposure day supply field. So we have now given um, guidance for the day supplies field of the drug exposure table, and that will be incorporated into the CDM uh, documentation. And we also have ETL guidance for the cohort table, which also still needs to be um, um, put into the CDM um, documentation. And with Themis, we're gonna to continue to collaborate and set up um, processes so that way we work effectively and efficiently 
with the CDM work group and also with the vocabulary work group, depending on what conventions are ratified, we'll need to work with these two working groups very closely to make sure um, that everybody is on the same page and uh, the guidelines theme is presents and publishes are concise and clear. We do have a few more issues that are open on the Themis GitHub that have kind of been sitting there for a while, like years, some dating back to 2018, and they need sponsors. Um, last week, I did go through all those open issues, and I did ping some folks about them and said, hey, are you still interested in this? Do you want to pick this up as a sponsor? Uh, so if I ping you, just reply yes or no. It's fine if you don't want to sponsor an issue. Um, and if you're interested about any of those issues that are open out there that you need some guidance on, um, please um, put your name into the Themes GitHub and say, hey, I'm interested in sponsoring this. Or you can always email me or message me on Teams. And I think that's about it for healthcare systems and Themis. See everybody at the symposium. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, next up is our Africa chapter, and this uh, is, I'm going to turn it to Cynthia Sung. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so um, the, the chapter started in, uh, I think, around February 2022 with the goal of uh, getting at least 25 members. And I'm really excited that we now um, have 117 members representing uh, at least 13 African countries and 14 ex Africa countries. We spent a good deal of the year on objective two, which was preparing um, communication documents and developed two value proposition documents, one um, targeting researchers explaining more about the Odyssey um, tools and software available, and then another one, a shorter one for ministries and data custodians to convince them to allow people to use the data. Um, and uh, then we also have a informational poster that um, folks will be taking to meetings um, in Africa to uh, just uh, provide um, more information about the Odyssey community. And we've got a four minute video for the Odyssey workgroup page that's in the um, final stages of publishing. Next, please. Um, then um, we uh, wanted to develop a pipeline from uh, one or um, more regional sources uh, into OMOP and uh, happy to report that there's uh, two um, networks, one from Rwanda called the LiStar Network. It's a 15 hospital network coordinated by the Rwanda Biomedical Center in Ghent University. And then um, an Inspire Network coordinated by the Africa Population Health Research Center, um, incorporating data from Kenya and Malawi. And just want to point out that these two started before the uh, Odyssey Africa chapter. Um, so don't want to take any credit for that, but it's been great. They come and they give us um, insight into what are the challenges of starting up these networks and um, giving inspiration to the other members. Um, there's other sites that are interested, but we need funding. And so that leads to objective four, which was to identify and pursue funding to support chapter activities. Um, the uh, APRHC uh, recently um, was successful in getting a Welcome Trust grant uh, where they'll be able to expand their um, network to include side Kenya, Cameroon, Senegal, Ethiopia with um, collaborations with the UK and France. So it'll, some of the objectives are to do data harmonization and then use that as a foundation for some machine learning objectives. And we've got several others that are uh, submitted grants um, for open grant calls and a few that are um, pending review or um, being prepared for government or philanthropic organization um, that might fund this work. Uh, next slide, please. And then um, uh, we've wanted to present the Africa chapter at related conferences focused on Africa. <clears throat> so we um, made two presentations at the Data Science in Africa Virtual Network Exchange, which was coordinated by the University of Cape Town. Um, DSI Africa is an NIH funded uh, initiative. It was, um, I think it's now into its fourth year. And unfortunately, um, the hubs that they funded are not using the OMOP um, common data model, but I think by presenting there, we hope that maybe they would consider also doing an ETL 
into the OMAP. Uh, I think really exciting is this successful meeting took place a couple of weeks ago with Africa chapter members and um, USAID, CDC, and the Africa CDC. And I think um, the main thing that came out of that was that the Africa CDC really um, sees that the federated model is going to be much more workable for the work that they do. And um, we shared um, going on, we shared a couple of Africa conferences that are going to be taking place from now to the end of the year. And members offered to take that Odyssey chapter poster with them and hang it there. And we also have a um, uh, Africa chapter work group meeting at the Global Symposium a Sunday in the afternoon, one to five. And uh, come and introduce yourself if you want to, you know, just um, say hello and say you're interested in this. And we also have an activity to um, try and map a maternal hospital admission survey question to these OMOP CDM and vocabulary concepts. And uh, there's a team link for remote participation. It's in the Africa chapter channel, and I also put it in the forums. Next slide. And uh, for the future work, we want to build a more comprehensive data source catalog so that can be um, findable and part of the larger Odyssey um, catalog. And we need to assess some of the vocabulary needs for the use cases in the region. And hopefully by 2025, we'll be matured enough that we can hold a in-person workshop. Thanks. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, next up, we have Kyle. Thanks, Craig. Hi, everyone. Um, so Odyssey GIS workgroup has been around for a little bit. Um, the goal of the workgroup is to enable studies of place related data in conjunction with longitudinal patient level data. Um, to get there, we think about our work in three pieces. Foundational work such as tooling and infrastructure to support cataloging and harmonizing geospatial data from data sources. And this is sort of separate, stands outside of an OMOP CDM. We think of it as a GIS module. Then there's Odyssey integration work, uh, including extensions to OMOP vocabulary and the CDM and potential development to existing Odyssey tools. And finally, use cases, which have been increasingly driving our development as the work group has matured. So for foundational work, um, this work largely started before 2023, but has continued to grow and evolve throughout the year of rapid development. Um, and as I mentioned, it stands outside of the CDM. So the first two elements are a data, mat data model for cataloging, cataloging metadata for external data sources and a universal representation for place-based variable data. So together, these elements make up what we call GaiaDB. Uh, this database contains metadata representations of external data sources and their variables. So the data sources can then be staged in a harmonized format before being ingested into a CDM extension table. To support GaiaDB, we have an R package called Gaia Core, and its main functionality is to transform um, metadata in the catalog into harmonized data. And we've already started to add quite a few uh, metadata sources to our repository of external data sources, including uh, the geometry data source Census Tiger and Social Vulnerability Index and EPA Air Quality System. So these are all pretty US centric, but uh, very foundational. So this year we've made great progress in finalizing a recommendation and supporting tools for a geocoding system, as well as a DDL and a table within GaiaDB for storing geocoded addresses from an OMOP table. Uh, we've increased the fairness of the GaiaDB data catalog and its holdings by adopting data catalog or DCAT metadata standards for semantically annotating the entries. And we also have created a front end data catalog by instantiating a work from UMiami called GDISC that leverages enhanced metadata to enable variable discovery and integration, sort of gives like a one single interface for all things GaiaDB. Um, for Odyssey integration, uh, Polina 
Talapova and Maxim Trofimenko have done huge amount of work creating uh, an OMOP aligned GIS vocabulary package that is all but completely ready to be uh, proposed to the vocabulary work group. It includes a GIS vocabulary, uh, social determinants of health vocabulary, and a really awesome toxins vocabulary that will be presented at um, the symposium. Um, we've also prepared a CDM extension table for relating regional information to patients over time. It's called exposure occurrence. And again, there's more information on that at the symposium. Super excited to introduce it. So just briefly about our guiding use cases, uh, I want to point out first that NORC at UChicago put forth a list of SDOH opportunities, and one of them refers to enhancing access to research-ready data through linkages to other data sources. So the work in the Odyssey GIS workgroup has helped to advance these recommended goals within the Odyssey community. Um, also, the Inspire Network through APHRC is prepared to use continental and global indicators once they're part of the GaiaDB catalog and once the Odyssey GIS work is more integrated with the Odyssey stack, particularly Atlas, Circe, feature extraction. That sort of brings us to our future work, our future interests in integrating more into the existing Odyssey toolings. And we have two posters, as I mentioned, at the Odyssey Symposium, one for the vocabulary, one for sort of more general Odyssey GIS work group happenings. Really excited to see everyone there. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, next up, Asia on, with the oncology work group. Okay. Hi, everyone, again. So, um, just going to be very, very brief. Uh, Oncology Workgroup uh, was established a couple of years back with one purpose, enabling observational cancer research. So, over the years, we've developed three subgroups that are focused on specific tasks and topics. Uh, briefly, we have a vocabulary and development group, work group that is that's specifically working on the uh, vocabulary and vocabulary needs and all of the ETL uh, conventions that needs um, that uh, we need to support um, converting the data into OMAP. We have the genomic work group that very specifically work on very fun and uh, never ending uh, like pretty complicated uh, topic, genomics, and how can we actually incorporate genomic information and represent it into OMAP. And finally, we have an outreach and research group, which uh, has a main uh, goal uh, to support data partners and investigators in application of oncology uh, modules and anything in conventions for oncology research. So everything that we do is supporting oncology research and OMAP. I'm not going to read uh, the OKRs, but this is our like, OKRs, and all I'm going to tell you today is that we've done some um, quite a lot of advancements and accomplishment over the past years in some of the specific topics uh, with the vocabulary. We've had tremendous support from the community and a special thanks to the uh, community for their support for stepping up and taking responsibility for pieces of the vocabularies that, can, um, that they want to work on. We have developed two tools that would support a uh, conversion of the genomic data into OMOP genomics. Uh, we're going to showcase that in the symposium and also a new tool uh, that enables uh, derivation of oncology regimens from uh, drug exposure information. Again, it will be showcased in this, during the symposium. What I want to specifically talk about is uh, data and our general goal. We wanted to establish a network of oncology data in OMAP uh, to, to allow us to do oncology research. What we talk about is everything that you guys have heard. Some of us are complaining or some of us want to have the tumor specific information that gets uh, gets you to the level of granularity that you need. We know that it's a very, very hard task. This is not just hard for us. It's a global problem, but we have the capability to come together to do that. So probably for the next couple of years or months, every time that I talk about, I would like to start with uh, calling for data partners, for partners to join us and help establish that. I'm just going to talk about data and data providers. We need to, to push ourselves to get to a point that to start um, cranking out studies and uh, generating results and reports using this. 
join us um, on Saturday on Campbell Room, 8 to 12. We're going to talk a lot about some of the accomplishments. We're going to have a very, very fun session reviewing some of the results that uh, Artemis, the new regimen extraction tool, is um, uh, providing, putting it together into work. We have some results from some of the data partners, and we would like to work with you to push it and move it to the next step. Thank you very much. Thank you, Asya. Uh, next is phenotype, uh, development evaluation, uh, either Gautam or Aza. Hey, hey, Craig, uh, this is Gautam. So thank you for the opportunity to, to brief you all about the progress we have made this year. Uh, what the slide shows, the OKRs that the work group agreed upon at the beginning of the year. On the left hand side is our rating of how we did. And, uh, and on the right hand side is just opportunities that we want to think about for next year. Uh, so we, we started this year with three major objectives. They are one, harden phenotype development evaluation framework. Objective number two was to improve collaboration by enabling the community-wide participation on phenotype development and evaluation. And objective three was to promote the usage of the RDC phenotype library. As you know, the mission of this work group is to promote uh, the community to help the community generate high quality evidence through by, by pushing the science of phenotype development evaluation. So as part of the objective one, our key result was to enable the community to complete 10 phenotypes via the current phenotype development evaluation process using activities like Phenotype February. And we are proud to report that we achieved that objective. 10 new collaborators were used to be able to use our framework that, that was developed by the community and, uh, and develop and evaluate phenotypes in a collaborative manner. Um, also, as part of Phenotype February, we tried to address the second key result, which is through scientific debate address four topics that community of community interest. And we address topics such as the, 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 the role of peer review of the, of the core definitions. We, we address topics such as the, the what type of validation chart review versus innovative techniques like P-Valuator and, and, um, and, um, uh, and so on. <clears throat> but we give it an exclamation mark because I don't think we completed that debate that was started in Phenotype February. Uh, we had also set for us a goal to clarify terminologies um, as you know, there is some ambiguity in the terms that we use as a, as a community, and we wanted to deliver a document on, on uh, by organizing such ideas, uh, but we were unable to do so. So that will be something that we will try to address next year. We also wanted to integrate probabilistic phenotyping into, the, into our framework. We currently are heavily weighted on rule-based phenotyping, and there is interest in the community for probabilistic phenotyping, but we have not been able to make progress on that. Uh, we have written some papers that is on the work group uh, work groups page. We're, we're, please, uh, we invite you to collaborate with us on that topic. Um, in terms of the objective two, the improving collaboration by enabling the community, we achieved that through the Odyssey uh, Phenotype February. Um, and one of our goal was to promote clinically trained scientists uh, as, with onboarding at least five new clinically trained scientists to engage in Phenotype February, which we which we met that objective. Uh, the, I think one of the biggest successes this year was the promotion of the usage of the RDC phenotype library. This has been on the on the community's wish list for a long time. We are currently on version three of the RDC phenotype library, and uh, we, we we achieved uh, to some extent um, a completion of the peer review of some of the core definitions that were contributed to the phenotype library. Uh, there, uh, thanks to some of the initiatives. A lot of new core definitions were, were added to the library. We were targeting 10, but we have now reached more than a 500 definitions in the library. Uh, we, we have formalized the submission process uh, to the library, uh, and we have, we have uh, clarified that process through, through several communication sessions. The, the, the How Often initiative of uh, the Odyssey uh, led to a push into of the submissions to the Odyssey Phenotype Library, which followed a systematic process. We also wanted to execute at least two Odyssey studies that used core definitions directly from the Odyssey phenotype library. And um, we, we have made progress on that. Odyssey's uh, how often study will be using definitions directly from the Odyssey phenotype library to perform uh, one arm of its, of its study. Um, there is a paper that is in draft stage about the Odyssey phenotype library itself. Uh, it is it is uh, it is an opportunity for us to collaborate as a community. There is a forum post out there from this work group inviting collaborations. And if you would like to contribute, please reach out through the work group. And uh, we would like to get this done by the end of this year. Um, 
there is uh, there's a, there's there's obviously our face to face meeting we have about we have we have a lot of people that registered for it uh, you may have received some personal emails from me asking for part for, for participation if you are interested in leading uh, a paper on a phenotype development evaluation on a clinical idea uh, that that is of interest to you please reach out to me um, and uh, we can work together on a plan to uh, deliver on that thank you Great, thank you, Gautham. Uh, two more. I didn't not get slides, so I'm just going to open up to them. And I'm not even sure is Evan here uh, for surgery and perioperative medicine. I am. I'll take uh, as little time as possible. But um, my name is Evan Minty. I'm a general internist. Uh, uh, this work group is co-led by myself and Jenny Lane, who's an orthopedic surgeon. I don't know if she's on the call, um, but uh, the, the she's main in goal... clinic today. She's fixing hands. I know. So I got to leave she's... for her. She said she might join in part to highlight her uh, recent uh, success in the study thon they ran. But um, and actually, uh, Kirsten, you might be able to chime in there too. But um, the main goal of the uh, motivation around the work group was um, in in my clinical side as a general internist. This seemed to be one of the um, most reproducible times in perioperative clinic when I was asked to predict the future, um, and uh, it seemed like a really nicely laid foundation as a data science problem and really a greenfield area in which we can uh, better use observational data um, and at least at the very least build on some of the pioneering efforts of groups like the Center for Surgical Sciences in Denmark. Um, so our main goals were uh, number one, to establish the work group involve three new members, new to Odyssey and strategic collaborations with three uh, Odyssey work groups. And I think we've hit that check mark. So that, um, that's that been great to see some new faces. Uh, the second one was characterization of uh, perioperative cohorts of interest. Um, and I really have to thank uh, Gautam Azza, Chris Knowles, uh, Patrick and George for, for their help in um, cleaning up around the edges of the, of the work we did in establishing some perioperative cohorts that will get an incidence-based characterization and how often. Um, one of them being the, the major non-cardiac surgery cohort that uh, I think is going to be of, of substantial um, interest in subsequent work. Uh, but also want to highlight um, Brian Butcher from um, uh, University of Utah for, for his contributions. And Andreas Rosen, we're, we're going to be looking with great interest into uh, his results in adenal carcinoma of the colon. Um, the third one was support the planning and execution of a study thon, which, as I mentioned, just wrapped up. And uh, Jenny Lane had sent me a note saying they had over 40 participants, 12 nationalities, hip, uh, nine different uh, variants of hip fractures represented in a day long study thon where they executed uh, core diagnostics ac across a few data sets. They have a GitHub, pay a GitHub page, which I will throw into the chat. Um, and are interested in replicating that study across other uh, EHR um, and registry databases, well, especially EHRs where they don't, in, in sites where they don't have a, a hip fracture registry. Um, and uh, finally, we're looking to uh, do some further work in perioperative prediction. Uh, and um, thanks to Ross and Jenna, the major non-cardiac surgery cohort is one of the benchmarking uh, cohorts in their uh, PLP benchmarking study, and we're hoping to do some more um, clinically relevant prediction work with that cohort later on. Uh, but thanks a lot for the opportunity to give the update and look forward to any new um, any new people who, who are interested in joining. Great. Thank you, Evan. Uh, one more uh, psychiatry. Dimitri. Um, hello. Uh, I, I didn't send you the slide. Can I share my screen really quick? Yep. Sorry, I just figured out that I have to do that. Uh, hey, hey. Hey, it went. Uh, oh, no, that's not wrong. Ah, sorry. Why doesn't sound okay. this is it? Yep. Um, yeah, so okay. we are psychiatry working group and our 2023 objectives is to get more structured group management. So we have a GitHub page, tasks and issues. Also, we collaborate with Odyssey and vocabulary team on cleaning up the questionnaires and um, and um, all those in inventory and questions. Uh, so this was a part of a community contribution. Thanks uh, Vocabulary Group for making those clear instructions and, and clear guidance. Also, we collaborate with SNOMED and concept modeling. So there was a problem with this um, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, which became the uh, child of, of, of physical trauma and some other problems were addressed with SNOMED. 
Also, we run the study on comparative estimation of the effects of antihypertensive medications on the occurrence of schizophrenia. So it was pretty interesting, and the were group members. So it was run by uh, by Don Yan and the work group uh, reviewed the results. Now, our future goals are uh, continue continue our collaboration uh, with the, if, within the ODC, such as with NLP group or or and vocabulary group, and also external collaboration to be done collaborating with Loeing and SNOMED. And also we want to attract new members, which we hope to do in, in the symposium meeting and new ideas such as use cases. So if you are interested in anything in psychiatry, therapeutic area, you're welcome. Or if you have specific data sets and you want to address your mapping issue or ETA logic or have some something interesting for the OMAP community and think the data sets can be helpful, uh, uh, you are welcome to join uh, and uh, contribute as well. Uh, thank you.